All right, everyone, in this video, I'll be cast testing this guy right here, the smallest round bait finesse reel sporting a size 28 millimeter spool and a digitally breaking module. This is the Long Z Airlite B51 DBC-1. Uh, the right hand retrieve model is the B50. Once again, this is the B51 for the left hand retrieve. As I mentioned, this is the digitally breaking uh, reel and during my unboxing video, if you haven't watched it already, I basically gotten this reel fresh off the ship from China to US. I got it from Long Z USA and they don't have all the marketing materials ready yet. And with that said, I didn't really know much about this reel, especially the breaking module, breaking system and anything it says, you know, right here, right? But they have some stuff now and they send it over to me and it's quite interesting. So the first thing uh, for this cast testing session, just like any of my cast testing uh, for the recent videos, I will be exploring the breaks of this reel. So with that said, take a look at the overlay image. This is basically the instructions that will come with this reel here. And by looking at this, I have discovered that M does not mean max. It means mode. So the empty circle means the least amount of breaks. The filled circle is going to be max breaks. In between the two circles, you see little um, notches, little lines, and every five of the lines is a diamond mark. Now, what does M stands for? M stands for mode. There's actually two modes for this reel. When you switch this guy all the way down to M and do a cast, it will change modes. And there is basically a practice mode, which means the brakes could be a lot stronger. And then there's long casting mode, which means the brakes can be a lot lighter. So yeah, this can be very interesting. So with that said, let's talk about the gears I'll be using today, right? I have 125 feet of Sunline Siglon X4. This is 0.6 go and I'll be putting on four pound uh, nylon or monofilament. For the rod, I'll be using the Major Craft, the Trapera. This is a two piece rod, four foot 10 inch, ultra light, and it goes down to one gram. But I know it'll, it'll go down a little bit lower, but here's the serial number so you guys can see the model. It's a TXS B4102 ultra light. And uh, as you see the weight range, one to eight grams. So whew, this is gonna be a great rod for those uh, stream fishing for trout and I can't wait to take this up north for some uh, trout fishing soon um, and then as you see the PE rating is 0.3 to 0.8 go but I'll be using 0.6 so let's get in the water and do some cast testing and once again we'll start off by exploring the breaks then let's see how low it could go by casting various lures so let's do this all right fam just got to the cast testing pond very hot very sunny and uh, we got a little bit of wind a little bit of wind's not bad but hopefully the sound will come out okay so we're gonna explore the brakes first, right? And we have the Z-Man Shad Fries here. I have the 116th ounce Shad Head and then their um, tiny to swim bait, the Shad Fries, 1.75 um, inches. Total weight is about 2.9 grams. And I'm not sure what mode this reel is on out of the box. And I'm looking at this and I'm casting it, right? At 50% brakes. I can't even see the lights light up because they say when you put it on M mode and you do a cast, it was it would change, right? So I'm not quite sure what it is, but this was a pretty uh, soft cast and it went out pretty far and easy. So I'm assuming this is like the, the long cast mode. Yeah, it, it feels not that restricted at midway. So let's change the brakes for a second. Let's put it to M mode and do this cast. And then we'll switch it back to exactly 50% brakes and see how it goes. So let's go to M. So yeah, there's clicks at the uh, empty circle. Uh, the filled circle and then the M, three clicks only. So I am at M. Okay, so I heard the sound, you heard the sound, right? And the brakes are pretty high, but I think it changed mode already. So let's put this back at 50%, uh, which is uh, max 20, right? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 25. So uh, what's, what's half? 12 and a half. Okay, so this is break 12 and a half. Okay, so this is practice mode or basically high brake mode. I can feel more restriction and the sound of brakes, like you, you hear it, it's, it's a little different than the other one. The other one was, it was longer, but it was less noise. This one right here was shorter, but it was louder. So it, I think if it applies hard, strong brakes, you can hear it louder, okay? So yeah, DC reels, interesting stuff. I don't have many DC reels. I had one, the SLX DC, uh, the very first one wasn't that great so I returned it well I actually didn't return I sold it and then I was gonna get the the upgraded one because it had the the more recent module but uh there were so many bait finesse stuff in the market I decided not to play with any of the Shimano DC stuff and look behold we have a DC bait finesse reel why not right because I'm all about bait finesse 
But uh, right now, this is on practice mode. So I think what we'll do is we're going to explore the practice mode first. Then I'm going to put it back on uh, long cast mode, explore that. And then I guess I will have to explore every single lure in both modes. So uh, wow, this is going to be an extremely long video, but let's get started. All right, so we are on practice mode and I'm going to lower the brakes to the second diamond, which is brake 10. Let's go. Wow. It's not bad. It's a um, pretty good distance. Okay, I feel a little restricted still. Okay, so let's lower the brakes even more. Let's go to the first diamond, which is brake five. And I'm going to cast soft first because I don't want to over spool. Not over spooling. Wow. It, it's going pretty far. Not over spooling. This is beautiful. Let me cast a little harder. Whoa, that did not over spool, but there was a funny little feel near the tail end of the cast. Um, how can I describe it? Let me cast it one more time. It's very, very interesting. And, um, hmm, interesting. So it feels like there's a, a tap, like the DC module tap your uh, spool near the tail end of the cast. I don't know if I, if I could capture that, but let me cast it again. And uh, maybe the rod tip would jump. Mm, I, I felt the tap, but I, it's hard to see if the rod tip jumps or not. But it, it, it does a jerk. It does a jerk. Right there. Hopefully I captured that, but it looks like there is a small little tap. Wow, this, that's uh, very interesting and impressive. So um, yeah, it's still flying out pretty far. I'm gonna put this at zero brakes or you know min brakes, right? And see how it goes. And let me just get this untangled. I'm gonna cast off first. There, there is a jerk for sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was going fast, so I kind of stopped it early. So let me um, cast high and harder. Wow, no overspooling at the minimum brakes with the practice mode on. So yeah, definitely the practice mode is gonna apply a lot more brakes. Well, now it's time to explore this reel at pro mode, the long cast mode. So once again, all you do is twist this all the way to M, do a cast, and that should change the mode. All right, so now we are long cast mode. Let's put this back on 50% brakes or 12.5. Okay, that, that is far. And I kind of feathered a little bit because I was kind of scared. So let me try to cast without feathering. Hopefully uh, we don't bird nest like crazy. Whew, oh my. Oh wow, that, that is far. It did not overspool at all. This is very impressive. All right, let's lower the brakes. See how it behaves. I need to find a spot, the sweet spot. The sweet spot it could be different for every person, but the way that I have to find sweet spot is I could cast, right? It'll go far as possible. I do not need to thumb the spool at all. It won't overspool, right? And then the range, that's the upper range. And then you lower it down to the point where it does overspool a little bit, but it fixes itself before the cast ends, right? So that's the sweet spot range for myself. And I typically use that. Um, that more breaking for windy days, less windy days, I'll use the lower end. And if I really, really want to cast far and I want to feather the spool, then I go below the sweet spot. Uh, the sweet spot is something I just created so that I could tell folks, hey, this is uh, potentially what this reel is capable for folks to use, uh, you know, when they first take this reel out or any reels out when I do cast testing, right? But note that sweet spot do change depending on your casting style, the line that you use, the amount of line you use, the rod you use, the lower you throws, right? It, it always change. But uh, yeah, I want to try to discover the sweet spot for this. And with that said, I'm going to try to put this at the break 10, okay? Break 10, which is the second dial and see if it overspool and it does not overspool. That was a soft cast. If I hard cast that, which I don't want to do because this is thin line, if it backlash, it may snap the line. Um, so yeah, uh, that was impressive. No overspooling at break 10. It's going far. This is amazing. All right, let's put this at break five. This might, uh, might overspool. Hold up. So I'm gonna cast soft. Break five. Oh, overspooling like crazy and it does backlash. Okay, I didn't cast hard too, so lucky. Lucky, right? So uh, yeah, the sweet spot might be a little bit higher than that. All right, so I fixed it and I'm gonna go between the two diamonds, the first and second diamond. So that is break seven and a half. Okay, woo, that went far, so far. I did not thumb it. It did overspool, but it fixed itself midway. And uh, do note that 
when you put this thing on the long cast mode, it no longer does that one little tap near the end of the cast, or it may do it, but um, I don't feel it. Hold up, I'm gonna do it one more time. Yeah, there is no extra tap near the end of the cast, but that is far. It is overspooling, and uh, oops, looks like it overspooled a little bit too much. But yeah, I, I would say the sweet spot range is very small in this reel due to it's a uh, DC, right? Uh, it's uh, very interesting. Oh my gosh, there's no overspooling on that one, that specific cast, but it is so far. This, this is insane. I can't wait to put this like on a longer rod and uh, see how that goes or you know put more line so that it will dispense more line per rotation for some of my power finesse fishing right when I want to throw that jig out super far cover, covering distances I typically use like a little bit heavier jig a little bit heavier line I put more line on in a longer rod so that I don't snap my line but this is very impressive the braking system oh my gosh I definitely will probably using this on long cast mode most of my time uh, because you know I am a uh, proficient caster, right? Uh, but do know that the practice mode versus long cast mode, making this reel super easy for people to pick this reel up, find the style that you want to use, and just go at it. Oh my gosh, this is great. This is so great. Distance is long. Anyway, it's now time to explore how low this reel could go in both, um, you know, practice mode and long cast mode. And because this video is going to be longer because I got to test both modes, I'm going to reduce the amount of lures. I'm going to go jump right down to the 116th ounce. All right, folks, we got the Euro Tackle, their Z Viber lipless crank. This is the ice fishing jig at 116th ounce. It's actually a little bit under 116th ounce. You guys can look at the uh, overlay below for the actual weight. We're going to first start off casting using the long cast mode since that's what we are on. So I'm going to put this thing back. Uh, let's just say, um, Let's put two diamonds or break 10 and give it a shot, a light cast, right? All right, that's, that's not too bad. Not too bad of a distance. I'm gonna throw a little harder. I mean, actually, that's a great distance, okay? That is a great distance. So let's, uh, let's try a little harder. That is far. That is a far cast. Oh my. <laughs> Dude, I probably don't care about the sweet spot on this reel at all. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it to the point of not overspooling at all this cast because like all the distance so far where it's not overspooling at all isn't great like it's it's so far but i would lower it a little bit i'm put like um let's see this is uh eight break eight let's go overspool and backlash okay wow i guess uh when the lure is this light it does kind of catch air a little bit too uh, but it is a condensed lure, so I, I am kind of surprised that I backlash that quick. There is a smaller version of this, and it's a little bit lighter, and that will be uh, able to cast a little bit easier through the wind. But that, that is pretty far. I have to feather that at break eight. That's very interesting. I don't think I'll go lower than eight. I think I'm going to keep it around like between eight and 10. Let's put this to practice mode now. So put on M mode, cast one time. The mode should change. The wind just picked up, so it's perfect time to test this, right? So let's put this thing right to uh, break 10, the second diamond. Oh yeah, a lot more restricted, a little bit less distance. Not a lot less, right? Not a lot less, but it's not too bad. I'm gonna put this at five breaks now. All right, break five, let's go. Wow, that's, that's not bad at all. That is not bad at all. I think um, practice mode, there's actually some good usage to it, right? I know a lot of folks like to throw some of these small condensed lures, spoons, and stuff like this, or maybe like a, a trout minnows, and they do like flick casts. So they do stuff like this. Like just flick it out, like very quick, very hard, very strong, right? Right? And I feel like that will make your lure fly so quick, right? And having the brakes that, you know, kicks up so quick, so strong, it's not bad. Right, it's, 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 it's good. And it's pretty accurate too. So for my streams, if I want to do a quick flick, i probably use this one. So I know I said earlier, right, I will only use like the long cast mode. I think I found a use for practice mode. But anyway, I'm gonna lower this down to zero breaks, the lowest breaks, just to see. 
It's not over spoiling. <laughs> it's not over spoiling at all. This is pretty insane. Wow. That is insane. And yes, it is still doing that summing thing right before uh, the tail end of the cast. This is so cool. All right, folks, the next door we're throwing is the infamous Euro Tackle EPF Swim, one inch swim bait on the 1 32nd ounce soft lock tungsten jig. This is uh, the size six hook, total weight, like 1.33 grams. And if you guys haven't watched this video of me using this, slaying trout in a very heavily fished pond for stock trout, do so in the top right hand corner. You know, uh, that day I was fishing, I outfished everyone there. There was one old guy came up to me, he's like, is that the Extreme Philly Fishing EPF Swim? I was like, yes, it is. Uh, it's Euro Tackle, by the way. And he was like, that's awesome. See, I was watching his video and I was like, maybe I shouldn't buy the lure because you know, when you watch videos, you don't know if they're fishing in a specific spot where it is loaded with fish, right? Or, hey, he could have been fishing for entire day for his 10 fish, but he condensed into like five minutes. So it's, it's hard to say whether a lure actually works or not. But he watched me fish from beginning to end. Like he was actually there before I was, and I was fishing, I was slaying nonstop. And he was like, now I have to go get some. So yeah, this lure right here, really amazing. And I love throwing on bait finesse. He was also impressed by, you know, bait finesse, but that's another topic, right? But this lure here, amazing. You guys had to get it. And I'm gonna show you if this, set up could cast this lure. So if you want to get this, you know, lure for this reel, definitely go for it. But anyway, we are at practice mode. Uh, since that was the last mode we're on, we're gonna cast with, uh, you know, zero breaks. And it's not over spooling. So yeah, um, if you're in practice mode, you can go low as possible in casting and it is not over spooling. It's not bird nesting or anything. This is so freaking cool. Very, very cool. But now we have to change it to long cast mode and then we need to figure out what breaking setting would be effective for my setup, right? So let's put it M mode, do a cast. All right, now that I should have changed it and I'm gonna put this thing at um, uh, break 10 because so far I feel like break 10 has been my safe spot. And it is indeed safe and it's going to maybe about the same distance a second go, right? At practice mode with no brakes on, so it's not bad, and I'm not casting that hard, okay? Because I, I knew if I cast too hard, I might mess up, and now I'm casting a little harder, and it did go a little further. So let's reduce the brakes just a little bit, see how it goes. But right now, I am so impressed with this freaking reel. Uh, let's put this thing at the um, eight. Not over spooling, all right? It's going far. I'm surprised that this is not over spooling because earlier I was over spooling with that um, Z Viber and that's a little bit heavier. I'm gonna put this up break five now and I'm gonna cast and see how it goes. That was a soft cast by the way. So it's uh, not over spooling. I'm gonna cast a little bit harder. Okay, so the wind kind of picked that one, but it's not over spooling. That's kind of odd. I wonder if it didn't switch to um, Long cast mode. I'm gonna put this at the uh, zero breaks for a second. No, 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 no. Okay, so it is over spooling. I, I thumbed it, I fixed it. Ooh. Well, I didn't fix it, but I stopped it from a you know, crazy bird nest. So it is on long cast mode. So that's good to know. Okay, it doesn't look like the wind's dying down anytime soon. So let's cast it at break five. Oh, a lot of over spooling. So yeah, um, yeah, I think like break eight a second ago and then break 10, it was pretty good. Like distance wise, it's very, very good. So with that said, you know, I think for long cast mode, break 10, man, that could be everyone's sweet spot. But again, once you backlash like this, make sure you take your time. Don't yank it too hard. Don't snap your line. Just take your time. So BRB. All right, can your DC reel cast a trout magnet? I believe this can. It advertised to go down to 0.8 grams, right? And uh, this guy here is 0.78 grams. Not too bad and that bird just pooped down from the sky. Oh man, angry birds. Uh, anyway, we are at uh, practice mode, so I want to put this thing back at 10 breaks right there at the second diamond. Let's go. It went to the left just a little bit. Let me just cast one more time because I actually fixed a bird nest and you know I didn't cast back out. So let's try again. There we go. It's a little bit better now. The, the line was not on properly, okay? So let's cast a few more times with this break setting. It's, it's not bad at all. Okay. Not bad at all. 
So let's uh, lower the brakes to, let's say, eight. Oh man, long cast mode. Ooh, yep, overspooling. Oh my gosh, a wasp. Ah, hold up, being attacked. He's going right into my freaking, no, no you're not, no you're not. Get, get, he's right there. Hey, look man. Back man, what did I do? I'm just casting here. All right, sorry about that. I got attacked by a, a wasp. It keeps trying to get underneath my, my hat for some reason. But anyway, um, that overspooled at break eight. So I'm gonna put it at nine, just like a notch up. And let's see how it goes. Overspooling and backlash in midair. So I think, uh, yes, with something this light, you're gonna have a little bit more brakes. It makes sense, especially when there, there's some wind, but the wind is going that way. It's supposed to be carrying for me. All right, well, let's keep exploring. Let's keep exploring. All right, I'm gonna cast softer. Yeah, you gotta feather that thing through. So I think guys, for a lure this light, it could do it. I mean, it's going out straight. You put 10 brakes on. Oh, now it's backlashing. What's going on? Earlier it didn't backlash. All right, uh, long cast mode. Get really, really tough for the trout magnet. All right, so let's up it a little bit more. Let's put the brake setting. 12 and a half. Let's go, let's go. That's a little bit better. And the distance is actually good. So yeah, most bait finesse reels, you can't cast trout magnet far. And this distance right here is pretty easy. It's like, I'm not even trying. It's accurate. It's acceptable. I'm passing it for the 0.8 grams for sure, because I know that if someone put on thinner line, if they want to put some thinner line, it should make it a little bit easier, but you know, oh, oh, there's a fish. Uh, what I was gonna say, um, you know, DC reel, I'm not too familiar with it, but if it, if it was uh, a magnetic breaking reel, you put a little bit more line, it's gonna be a little bit easier for the lighter lures, for sure. And um, I would assume, so with this bull as well, cause you know, you could cast lighter lures easier on the start. The question is how does it behave, right? How does your breaking module behave with the very, very light lures? And I can't even get this thing out of them. I need my forceps. All right, off you go. So that's not too bad. We're gonna try this now at the practice mode and see how this thing goes. Whee! All right, that mode should have changed. Because I put an M, do one cast. Now, now let's put this thing back at the break 10. Okay, so it, Backlash in midair could have been for my, you know, other line uh, that wasn't stacked well. So let's do another cast. Yeah, that was definitely my previous cast, but it is overspool near the end if you don't tap the spool before it touches the the water. But it is tapping before the tail end of the cast, and there is a little bit of overspooling. But I actually do like using practice mode for the trout magnet. I'm gonna put this at break five. Okay, and it does backlash. Okay, um, yeah, I would say um, use the practice mode for that sub one gram, but don't go too low. Don't go too low. Let's see, let's try this thing at, uh, let's put this at eight. What's going on? Uh oh, got tangled. What's going on? Where did I tangle? Here, 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 here. All right, here we go. All right, let's try break 10. Practice break in mode. It's overspooling, overspooling. Sheesh. Yeah, so casting the trout magnet with this reel here is kind of difficult on both modes in a way because you can't really find a sweet spot. But I feel like if you were to put this on practice mode and put around 10 breaks, it actually works a lot easier. It really depends on your setup, right? Uh, but if you put casting mode, like uh, the long cast mode, you definitely want to over 10 breaks, like maybe around 11 or 12. But 10 breaks, safe for the practice mode. And it, it gets pretty good distance. So let's summarize the cast testing session. Overall, the Long Z Airlight B51 DBC1, amazing. The braking module is very interesting. It has two braking styles, right? For beginners, where it has a strong braking system, or you said so that it's for proficient anglers casting longer distance. And change the mode is pretty easy. As you've seen, you just change the brake dial R to M, do a cast, and it'll swap modes. And as mentioned, during the cast testing session, it was kind of difficult to see the color changing of the lights. If you look at the braking module, right, there's a little clear thing. 
the light's supposed to change there when you change mode and with the bright sun and my sunglasses, I just didn't see it. So potentially, potentially there could be some improvement in how an angler would change the braking style or at least there's some sort of a better indicator. Practice mode, very, very interesting practice mode because it applies a lot of brakes, so you actually cast a little bit shorter distance, but it doesn't feel like so restricted that you're gonna be casting left and right, and that is if you put uh, the braking power around below 10, okay, below 10. Like some lures, you go all the way down very low and it, it doesn't backlash. It really depends on your lure weight, right? But what I wanna share with you is that there is like an intelligent thumbing near the tail end of the cast. Like when you're casting out there, right, as you're casting, right, once it hits the peak, it starts dipping down, like right when it starts dipping down, you feel a little jerk on a spool, like a little thumbing, like artificial thumbing to slow down the spool a little bit more. Now, that doesn't eliminate you to uh, not thumb the lure before it hits the water because I tried a few times, it does overspool just a little bit, but hey, it's better than not thumbing at all and uh, you know, you overspool like crazy, right? That intelligent thumbing allows the beginner to say, hey, I just felt a little jerk. It's time to stop the spool. Like that's how, that's like my thought process. Like potentially that's how a beginner can use this little uh, feature, right? Sounds pretty cool. And then long cast, it does not have that. Uh, the braking is a lot less and you could really, really achieve some good casting distance. Like I was casting some of those larger lures pretty far. So with that said, I can't wait to try, put more line on the spool, put it on a long rod and throw some of the heavier lures and see how it goes. So the lightest lure I was throwing during this cast testing session was a trout magnet. Now, it could throw it, very good distance, right? And it's pretty easy, pretty accurate, but it feels different compared to, say, regular magnetic breaking reels. It's gonna take me a little bit to get used to it, but I'm glad that I don't really throw lures that low anyway, so uh, it's not gonna bother me, but do note that it's a little bit different. It's, uh, it's hard to dial in at the moment for me, right? Because it's a short casting, uh, cast testing session. I would probably need to play with it a lot more in order to become more uh, proficient in it and find out what the sweet area spot for a specific casting style. But like I said, I don't cast it too often, so it's okay with me. I will be throwing the EPF swim as my lowest one and it's, it flies, it really, really flies. So yeah, the DC module from Long Z is so amazing. I can't wait to try out other reels as well. I'm looking forward to some of their bigger reels that come to the US. And uh, yeah, I wanna pretty much play with DC modules and uh, learn more about it. So anyways, uh, if you wanna see Jimbo fish this reel, I do plan on taking it on some stream adventures. It definitely deserves a trout fishing trip with the ultralight setup because this is a very, very small round bait finesse reel that has a DC module and it casts really, really well. So if you guys wanna see that happen sooner rather than later, smash that thumbs up button and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Thank you for watching. The fish don't wait. Check out the description below as I left links to where you get this reel.